Hello and welcome to Season 1, Episode number 6 of Bad Influence from Children's ITV. This episode aired on the 3rd of December 1992 and we're rapidly approaching, well we are in the Christmas season so things are getting mighty exciting. Hi in today's Bad Influence. Hello Violet. Ooh nice leopard skin you've got going on there. I, did, I loved Indiana Jones on the Spectrum, the whole series. Zoom in on me, Eric on one, and I'll be using a home computer to edit some of the finest footage ever shot in the back. Andy Crane's got a video camera, good God. When they used to be the size of a domestic chicken. Can you get domestic chickens? All day helping other people who've gotten stuck. Oh, cheat hotlines. Did anyone phone cheat hotlines? But before all of that slimy fertilizer, It cost a bob or two. Interesting. The word of the week is poke, which is a techie oh, word. Oh, yes. The non -techie this is what I'm talking about. Is, of course, cheat. And here's one for Bill and Ted's excellent adventure on the Game Boy. Mm. To jump straight through to level eight. Game Boy. Is, simply type in 5556737 on the password screen. Listen to that music. Beautiful. Nine, paradise. Type in five 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 six four two nine and to get to level 10 school concert type in five you've got to hope you had a video recorder eight eight one and if you otherwise about the program, you have to memorize these sheets quite quick if you didn't already know five, five, seven three two all right andy you can get on with the program now i guess we're in the data blast at the end of the show no, really no problem well, thanks very much indeed yep yeah, yeah, yeah right thank you but you still need a video recorder for that Violet. Andy. Exude. Stop Violet. talking about! We're all sick of you following us around that stupid camera of yours. Uh, you see... Oh, look, he's got an Amiga. Understood. The reason I've been following Violet around with this camcorder of mine all day is because of a new software package for the Amiga. I always loved it when they had the uh, home computer sections. And pictures from either your camcorder or your normal VHS player. First thing you've got to do is load in what you've just recorded, so I'll plug in my camera. I mean, games are very interesting, but this stuff computer. is... Even more interesting, well, to me at least. Do and check my rushes back. Excuse me. Now then, how is Nam look? Early video editing. God, it must have been a painful process back then. And I'm now loading in what I just shot on the camcorder into the computer through this bit of equipment here. It plugs into the hard drive port on the side of your Amiga, and it's called a digital. I mean, it is time-consuming enough now, but as it translates, the I can barely imagine and the vision from the camcorder or the video recorder into a language that your computer can understand. Look at that. That is you can do some really interesting stuff with what it. you call a limited Change interface. Forwards by dragging that along, or you can watch it backwards, or by changing up here the frames per second, you can. It's watch cool, it though, isn't it? This is like or the early days of video editing right. on your home computer. I mean, we take it for granted now. Window, the edit window, even it's comes with Windows. Video that I shot. And it's come, for, it's come with Windows for quite a while. Frame after frame. So if I want to find some interesting bits of Nam. There, that was a bit. So we can start him there and then have him throw that over his shoulder. And if we end that there and then I select the loop window, we can watch him throw that over his shoulder again and again and again and it's again. It's a GIF creator. Yes, thank you, Nam. That's quite enough for that. GIF, whatever you want to call it. You can chop bits out. You can make it go back. I call it GIF. You can put bits in, take bits out, change it all around. Along you should probably call it GIF, unless you don't want to. Call it what you want. I don't care. Video I've just shot. You can play it. Or using these lines here, you can drag it along and listen to what you recorded. There's Nam. There's me. I spent ages playing with now, the wave saying? editor that you got with Windows, Windows 3.1. Just recording things and playing them back and reversing them. Beginning of the S. Now, reversing the, the Red Dwarf backwards episode to put the, put it the right way round. Oh, what fun times. <laughs> and enlarge the area of sound by using zoom. Play that back. Now we go into the sequence there and yep. find some pictures of Violet saying "Stop messing about." Now she was wagging her finger at the time. I wonder what um, is. I wonder what resolution that. Beginning. So we put that in. Do you start think point. it keeps it at um, 360? That is the end point, and we can program both the resolution and the pictures. That's the standard TV resolution, isn't it? 360. So now when I hit W, I. I can scratch mix Violet. And I actually 360p. I earlier on on the Q key. Progressive. <laughs> the software and the digitizer will cost you about 70 quid. It will run on all Amigas. And 
70 quid. Not too bad, really. For money. Obviously, it's not a full blown editing package, but it's great fun when you can do this to Violet. Yes, thank you, Andy. Hollywood is. Oh, there's a Mega Drive. And while we're on the subject of great movie directors, our main review this week is Indiana Jones 3 on the Mega Drive. Based on the film The Last Crusade, and you know the story. You've got to beat the baddies, find the Holy Grail, and rescue your old dad while you're at it. Here's Adam. This is an 8 bit conversion. Adam, good to see you, my mate. To me, like they spent loads of money on the license and virtually no money on the game at all. The graphics and sound are really. Oh, he's so miserable. <laughs> He just hates games. Parts of the game where Indiana has to jump in there, quickly avoid the rocks to get into a second one, jump at the right time to avoid falling in the water by getting onto the rope. It just shows how much the game is based on look rather than skill. The graphics are so pitiful. Just look at that background, I and mean, you can easily get more than that onto one cartridge. If you like the film so much, just use your money and get a video instead. God, he is ripping this in game to pieces. Cheap and nasty. Look cheap at that, though. It looks quite good. Nasty for us. It can take 10 weeks to save up for a Mega Drive game, so it's important to get one that's good. I wanted to give this zero stars, but the scoring only goes down to one. So he is harsh. Money on this. It's not looks all right. I don't think I've played it. Punch is good too. I'd have to mark I think I'd quite like it if I did though. It looks my sort of game. Difficult. I expect a lot more from a 16-bit game. And the Mega Drive is definitely capable of more. They're just churning out any old stuff for Christmas. Yeah, that's what. And so the final scores we tend to do. The boys gave it a make a bit of money. One out of five. And the girls liked it a bit better. Three out of five. Oh, three out of five. Not bad. Not bad. If you're a Nintendo fan over here, and who isn't? Even President Bush is rumored to play. You need to be aware. Well, we're talking the original President Bush as well. For starters, you can snack on Mario cookies. Mmm. There's everything from pie tins to placemats. It's everything from marketing to marketing. Pool floats from socks to underpants. But I'm not going to show you those. No. Best you don't, mate. Actually, I'm not in a diner. This is Cafe Mario. Cafe Mario! Headquarters in Seattle. The people who eat their ham on rye hold the muscle. Oh, they look happy. The he doesn't look happy. The world, because they're the people who man. Probably upset at the extortionate prices. The gameplay. This is Robin. How many? Oh, this is the uh, tips hotline place. And they go through a grueling training program that lasts about eight weeks and involves knowing pretty much everything there is to know about every game. Would that be a good job? Um, I mean, you get to play games, but you'd have to play them so you knew everything. Just yet? No. Well, I guess you'd just read the. You'd I bet they didn't do this, did they? I bet they just had the Nintendo guide for each game with them. And they just and since it started, relayed it to the customer, looked it up, charged them 10 quid. Should knock the two heads off, then you'll be able to defeat them. And they just sat there playing whatever games they'd like. Defeated first. Games counselors are... Uh, games counselor. A walk of just about any type of life. But you definitely have to have uh, a love for video games and, uh, of course, the dexterity to be able to play those games as well. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> tough, yeah. It's pretty difficult. No, it's in one of the rooms. <laughs> wow, you guys need to get a database. These are the instructions of every game ever made, and this whole thing is just for NES. We have uh, a library of over 6,000 games available for anybody who wants to uh, play the games. But it's pretty wild because you, you wouldn't think that they'd have to know all that stuff upstairs. But they also get some help from a, a large database of information that we have. Oh, what's he, oh, he, oh, they've got a database. Look at that. Good. Good. We get some really cute okay. kids calling up, very articulate, and seem to know what they're talking about. And uh, I've even yes. talked to a few um, senior... Slapping pounds and pounds onto their parents' phone bill. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Nintendo is funding some university research to try and find out what it is that makes. He's always in that shop. He was in that shop last week. Uh, so addictive. Come on. Ah. Oh. There's definitely one game right now that they're getting a lot of questions on, and that would be Legend of Zelda: a Link to the Past. In fact, we're receiving over fifty thousand calls a week on that game. Alone. Fifty thousand a week. They must have been coining it in. Blue ones to be up and the orange ones to be down. And then if we jump off the ledge, we can go up the staircase and then go to the upper left door. Okay? I mean, Does that make sense? The days before the internet, it's amazing how things have changed, isn't it? Slimy Footless, come with me to a small island off the coast of Australia. Mm. This is a cheat for... T this is a cheat for Tasmania. Now, to choose levels, simply... There's some inconsistencies here. The right 
I mean, his hat's fallen off, but the TV's still there. The, the, the Mega Drive. At the same time, when the title screen appears, Him. then press start. I, then I just don't know what to believe anymore. Then begins. <laughs> Truth. Now, if you're stuck on a game, whatever you do, don't phone Nam and don't go phoning America. There's a Nintendo hotline in this country too, and the number is. Mm. Yeah, don't phone back either. Double two, double two. Now for this week's news and previews. I like it how she doesn't tell us how much it is. Parodius, one of the hottest imports over the past few months, will be officially available for the SNES in February. Oh, look at the colour. I love the colour in SNES games. It takes place in an odd world invaded by huge fishy types. By the time you've encountered the sumo wrestlers, dancing girls and penguins, you won't be able to hit your joypad for laughing. Good news for Game Gear owners. Sega have bought out their special brand of batteries for their juice-guzzling handhelds. Priced at $3.99 for six, Apparently, they give you five hours play, which brings down the running cost to about 80p an hour. I wonder if that was true. I, I would love to get a hold of some of those batteries and test that. Now it's on PC this week and soon available on CD. They're not going to be as good as today's batteries, and you, know, you wouldn't be able to get hold of any which are still charged. 500 years ago, you play the chosen one, El Dorado, and with the help of an old Inca spirit, have to fight the invading conquistadors to retrieve the three powers of time, matter, and energy. I like the look of that. To restore the ancient Inca Empire. This week, Ken sees the Games Master Live show, a huge games jamboree organised by our colleagues at Channel 4. It runs from Friday to Sunday at the Birmingham NEC and even includes an exact replica of the Games Master oil rig set. Now, well. games reviews. Zyconics on the Amiga. Zyconics. In the style of Tetris and Columns. Your mission is to stop the blocks filling up the screen. Here's Kathleen. It's like some sort of elaborate Pez dispenser. This is an excellent game. You've got to try to make diagonal and horizontal lines to make the screen clear. The music's really brilliant. You can pick jazz or rave or funk or soul, or whether you want to just switch it off. Yeah, I'd probably do that. There are lots of different sorts of bombs and exploding balls which blow up your blocks. Some of them are quite good because they get rid of things you don't want. There are far different games to play, but they're all much the same. I don't think I've ever heard of this game. Stone faster as the screen fills. It looks all right, doesn't it? Gets harder to control. I definitely buy this. When I say it looks all right, I mean it looks. It costs less than twenty pounds. Pretty garbage. Brilliant game, great music. But you have to stop playing it after a while because the pastel shades. He likes it though. Jesus, if Adam likes it, then there must be some thing good about it. Playing, great to watch too. Nice jumping. And the scores for Zyconics, the boys gave it an average three out of five, but the girls liked it a bit more. They gave it four out. Four out of five. That might be worth a go. Next we've got Bomb Jack. The Game Boy, yet another arcade. Bomb Jack. But does it work as a handheld? Looks like it. I don't think this works well for the game. Oh. No. It's just too weak. It's the kind of scoring game that should stay in the arcades. <sighs> Levels, you come to what are you talking about? It's Bomb Jack. Here it's easy to pick up points. It's an amazing game. There goes another level. They're quite short. Yeah. This is a slow game option. I don't see the point. It just makes the whole game harder. Mate, the stop. Whole idea is dated. S stop there are it. Better things out for the Game Boy. It's amazing. It's just an average game. I will pay twenty-five pounds for it. Yeah, right, maybe not. Game on the Amstrad and the Commodore 64. This one's not as good. The bodies are too random and you can't see what's going on clearly. The Game Boy screen was a bit of a problem. It's when I was younger. Maybe it's because I'm older now, but I don't really think this version works. I won't go out and buy this. And the scores for Bomb. The boys gave it three out of five, an average score, and the girls also gave it three out of five. Yeah, that's all right, I suppose. 25 quid is a lot of money for a bomb jet game. We get thousands of letters every week to this program. You quit on the spectrum is a bit different. Come into the studio and be part of the experience that is bad influence. Now, some people write us one letter, some people two, some people even three. But a couple of guys from London have sent us. I didn't write any letters. These are all from Roger and Stephen Wright. What could we do after all those letters but invite them in? They're over here. It also has nothing to do with the fact that they are Pop Duo Fresh. Welcome. Pop Duo Fresh. I cannot remember them whatsoever. So, as hardcore players, we'd like to know your top five. Top five. Well, I'll start with um, boxing. Do you admire their flat top haircuts, though. I like the moves. You can get some. Real Buster Douglas stuff. boxing. It's funny as well. What about number four? Uh, Paperboy. That's yeah. pretty good. It's pretty cool. Why that one? Avoiding all the cars, checking newspaper and boxes. Do you think they've just been told some random yeah. games beforehand to? Sonic the Hedgehog. The list. Or do you think they're actually fans of gaming? Hedgehog. Number two. 
Number two, I reckon, um, what do you reckon number two is? Number two, right? Um... WWF Wrestling. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw this at the Future Show at Earl's Court. Axel Jim Duggan was there. Um, I like the moves, you know? You can, you can, they're really realistic, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. You, can you like the moves. That is quite a core cool gameplay mechanic, Andy. You can also hear the crowd going, in the background. It's really cool. Okay, so WWF. Good game, but in the arcade. I used to play that quite a lot. Number one, but come on, it's got to be. Street Fighter 2 on the Super <laughs> Nintendo. Oh, so you fancy yourself as Street Fighter 2 players, do you? Well, Definitely. Yeah. It would have been quite new would have only been released a few months prior street fighter 2 yeah why not? listen come over here because there's a guy you've got to meet here this is uh, this is lakesh lakesh does um, the reviews for us here on the program so yeah so this man knows what he's talking about and he's well out on street fighter 2 who's going to take him on um, hip dip do me. <laughs> okay, right. Hip dip do. It's a good job he didn't do any other sort of rhyme. Okay. I'm sure beat me. I'm sure beat me. Right? Guile against Chun Li. Okay, you ready? In your own time, lads. It's, it's bad influence okay. against Fresh Street Fighter 2. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Well, Roger's doing some spectacular moves. We haven't done anything yet. <laughs> Chun Li. Big fan of Chun Li as a character. Chun Li, E Honda, Blanca my top three characters yeah, life's running out of mainly because they've got moves where you can just button bash and kick frantically chop frantically or electrocute yourself frantically that's my staple move sit down in a corner chop away oh, man. Yeah. Oh, the, the guys who review the games on this program know their stuff yeah, Guile is nearly dead Oh, he's, he is out of it. He's down again. Roger's, oh, Roger's staging up. Chun Lee. Come back from Roger. Come back, come Roger. Come come back down, in the air. Oh, and shame. down. Oh. Oh. Guile wins. Never mind. Well done, Lakesh. Oh. Commiserations. Good work, Lakesh. Oh. Thanks uh, to both of you for coming in. And let's hope that um, the new single, hey. Did I Say Tiamo, does a little bit better in the chart <laughs> than you did on Street Fighter 2. Pleasure Thanks to see you. Well. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Cheers. Beep, 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 beep. Medical flash. Exercise and fresh air are very, very bad for you. Do not do it. Exercise rots your brain, makes your trainers smell and causes sweat. Pluh. Fresh air and sunlight make your skin go all funny, so keep your curtains closed all day. In fact, the closest you should ever get to exercise or outdoor activity are games like Super Tennis on the SNES, and even that can be tiring. Ooh. So, use this... I do like a good tennis game. Singles. First of all, especially Virtue Tennis on the Dreamcast. Press your select button. Then move over to Control Pad 2 and press. Oh, that reminds me, I used to have an awesome tennis game on the Master System. I played it for ages, I can't remember what it was called. Then LL. That is my next bit of research. Then go over to Control Pad 2 and use your B and A buttons to change your top. Possibly after I've finished writing about the Atari Jaguar. Finally, press select and you've got the ultimate tennis player. And after all that, I've come over a bit funny. I think I'll have a lie down. You do that then. If you want to uh, access the information in the Data Blast, set your video to record now. Last week's competition was to win a trip to Manchester to record a single with Brooklyn in their recording studios there. Oh, you, there's my uh, alarm going off. ...from five games, and they were as follows. Don't worry, I don't set it to mark the end of an episode. That was Street Fighter 2. I wonder if I got these right. Then came this one. I think I did. Super Mario World. I'd be quite upset if I did. This was number three. If you didn't get that, you've been living under a rock. Sonic the Hedgehog. Number four. Trying to nip the wall that game. Tetris. And finally. Yes. The Lemmings. First correct answer out of the bad influence waste paper basket came from Daniel Desbra, who lives. I keep meaning to watch these, hoping to watch these, and find my name being drawn out of a hat. If you need anybody to help on backing vocals, I'm available at reasonable rates. Oh, I just missed it at the time, but I don't think I entered any competitions. Oh, a Sega Menacer! Which actor played Indiana Jones's dad? Answers on a post Sean Connery. <laughs> competition to arrive no later. <laughs> what, 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 there wasn't a Scottish accent at all. What, what am I doing? See you same time, same place next week for bad. I'm, I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> That's not a good day for anything. Okay, here's a data blast. Get your video recorders on the go, or download the plugin for YouTube that allows you to frame advance if you want to read this. Oh, Tasmania, Indiana Jones 3, Bomb Jack, Video Master. It's quite useful because it shows you the, the charts, game charts at the time. 
I don't, I don't know if that, why that would be useful, but it might be. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you soon.